Television is a visual medium. The colors, the images, the depth of field. But if television is a visual medium, it's also an auditory large. Listen at it, can you hear it? Can you hear the water? It is an unmistakable roar. I'm Glenda Parks and I'm from Goldsboro. I love to come down here, hear the, the water rushing down off these little things, that thing there. Wiggins Mill Reservoir in Wilson. 285 acres of water funneling over this concrete dam. I'm about uh, five, nine, five, 10. I'm not a right up against it, but from here it looks like it could be a good 20 foot. Contentia Creek carries the water onto the Deuce River, but it's this dam noise that makes fishing here so special. It's relaxing. To me, it actually kind of reminds you of, you know, waves at the ocean. I love the sound of the, of the water running down, the rushing of the water. The rushing water. Ironically, it sets a tone of rest and relaxation. At my house, my apartment, I have a radio. It's got the rain, the ocean, the water, the, the, this here, the fishing water. I love it. Glenda Parks is here for more than the fishing. It's just like you got anything on your mind, you can release it from right here. You just release your, all your problems right here in the, in the pond. Release it and let your worries simply become water over the dam. Bill Wesley, WRL News, Wilson. Dismal Swamp State Park. Dark and foreboding. A place whose very name is enough to give visitors pause before entering. So when story producer Richard Adkins grabbed a bike and put on headsets, there was only one choice on the playlist. This is surprisingly pretty back here. It's anything but dismal out here. Every time I come out here, it makes me feel happier and more alive. Joseph White knows a thing or two about the mountain bike trails through the dismal swamp. How many miles are out here? I believe there's uh, 18 and a half miles. Of old logging roads. So and I usually come out here maybe two, three times a week. The park is known for its wildlife. That includes plenty of bugs and plenty of bears. There's more out there than just bears. There's deer, there's turkey. Squirrels, even rabbits, bobcats. And there's a couple of snakes here and there, but nothing really bothers you as long as you don't bother it. Less than a mile from the trailhead, you could be biking beside Bambi. I can't stress enough, it's just peaceful out here. It's beautiful. The trails offer Joseph White a chance to be alone, a break from the daily digital distractions where nothing beeps, dings, or chimes. And it's really good to be disconnected from the internet for a while not people having to call you on the phone or check your Facebook page or the other things that we get wrapped up into. I think it's a lot, it's a lot better. Dismiss the thought of a dismal day and concentrate on your pedal through paradise. How grateful I am to be alive and how good it is to be out in nature and far away from civilization. Brian Mims, WRAL News in the Dismal Swamp State Park. Somewhere between the earth and the sky. Uh, we're gonna put our head up in the air. There is a little nook of nowhere that is filled with amazement. Let it out. Look how high it's going. On top of Jockey's Ridge, two-year-old Emma Taylor is learning to let her fancy fly. Hey, you see? You're doing it. You're doing it, Peanut. But kites are more than a childhood fling. Wow, uh, the possibilities are kind of endless. Chris Schultz flies kites professionally. So we're going to pull, okay. hold, and return. When so he's fast. not teaching, he's trying to tame the mighty wind. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Every color of the rainbow against a blue sky. Well, a good kite looks bright and in the sky. It always pops. It's very shiny or um, colorful. Like this kite. Susan Lennon designed it. It's a great way to make art that people put up in the sky in the big kites. There's tons of people that really enjoy them, clearly. An aerial art form with down-to-earth roots. This is Blake, and this is Bryce. They're twins, and they're four years old, almost five. This is their first time flying a kite. For the Walton family, looking up toward heaven cool, huh? is a spiritual experience. I don't know. There's something about it, man. There's, uh, it's cool watching it fly up there, and of course, all the cool colors and different shapes and everything up there in that big blue sky. It's pretty cool. One, two, three. What goes up 
must come down. Reel it in, here it comes. But the joy of a kite at the end of a string is a feeling that will always soar. All right, and it's down. Bill Esley, WRL News, Jockey's Ridge. These are the dog days of summer. And this is Lake Rollin. 75 acres of open water. Come on, Ella. Smack in the middle of NC State's Centennial Campus. Yeah, they love the water. Lexi and Ella. Good girls. Half sisters. All dog. This was once Raleigh's main water supply. Now it's a prime source of doggy delight. They were bred for it. They, uh, I don't understand the balls. <laughs> they just, they love them. Balls, squirrels, and water. They just, they can't get enough of. Good girl. On the hot summer days. I really enjoy coming out here and cooling down. Tucker. He's about a year and a half. Kobe. He's about five months, still growing. And 14-month-old Brooklyn. They're all rescues from the ASPCA. Get out to Lake Raleigh three or four times a week. Chill out. Go fetch, go fetch. I think they're happy. Out here they have no bounds. And no fences, no leashes. They just do whatever they want. <laughs> Good boys. Not a whole lot of places around in the city where they can be like this. They love it. They can really run around out here, enjoy nature. It's what these dogs are meant to do. Get it, Lexi. Get the ball. Nothing makes them happier than playing in the water. Playing in the water of Lake Raleigh. Good girl. Bill Leslie, WRL News, Raleigh. Come on, girl. Come on, get the ball, Lexi. Summer memories are made of many ingredients, like a hot day and a cold mountain stream, a slippery rock, and a family friend with a point of view sport camera. Go! It's kind of a little weird. Go! Wow! <laughs> Adam Knight is taking nine-year-old Grace Allen for her first adventure down sliding rock. She's never been, so. It's a 50-foot natural water slide in the Pisgah National Forest. I did it as a child, and so um, it was something that we wanted a harder experience as well. Experience is a great word there. This isn't swimming or diving. It's basically falling down a waterfall. I wouldn't recommend wearing a bikini because that's a little bumpy on your butt. Right there, that does not feel good. Laura Casey and her family grew up sliding down the slippery rock. We used to slide down it, and it was before it was a park. Now she's back to bring those memories to life for her 15-year-old son. Been down it now, I think, three times, and he's still doing it. Truth be told, though, Jimmy's trip down the rock puts him one up on his mom. I actually chickened down and didn't do it because I was only, I think, 10. Understandable. This is not for the faint of heart. It's like a plain old water slide until you get there. Until you get there, and then all of a sudden reality just changes. Yes. Reality, that cold pool of water at the end of your descent. It's fun, but it's cold. Fun, cold, and slippery. It's enough to keep Grace Allen's mom watching from the high and dry overlook. She says, well, Grace Allen, it's cold, so I don't want to spend all my time getting all wet and not pretty and all soggy. Uh, and that, and we're also going back to Asheville to go shopping. So. Nice save, Adam. Nice <laughs> save. Watch that ledge there. But I think you've earned all the points you'll ever need taking little Gracie Allen down that waterfall. That was good, yeah? Bill Leslie, WRL News, Transylvania County.